The daycare debate. Is there room for a big national level social program? We talked to an expert about the politics of affordable daycare. Also, the country's leading the way. Could those daycare models work here in Canada? I'm Afan Chaudhry. Welcome to Globe Now. Affordable daycare is again in the spotlight, with the NDP pledging billions of dollars on an ambitious affordable daycare system, which it would seek to implement if elected in the next federal election. So let's talk about the politics around daycare policy with someone who's been researching the issue for years. Martha Friendly is Executive Director of the Child Care Resource and Research Unit. It is a policy research group. Hi, Martha. Hello. How does the NDP platform fit in with your vision of what Canada needs? Um, I think very much. I mean, in the sense that it's talking about a, a program where the federal government would be the glue and work together with the provinces whose jurisdiction it is to try to move it towards the kind of program, as you said, that some of the more ambitious European countries have had for many years. So. The broad strokes um, are really, um, you know, affordability, they mention quality, um, they have a concept that it's a universal program for everybody, and that there's, a, you know, an interplay between all of those kinds of factors. I mean, do you think there could be some other kind of solution that's perhaps not a national level social program? What we have now is not a national level social program. The federal government doesn't have a role in it, and I've written about this for years. It doesn't work. And one of the reasons it doesn't work is because, in fact, even though there are differences across the country, in fact, families basically need similar kinds of things. So if you have a two-year-old in an outport in Newfoundland, in fact, the two-year-old still has the same kinds of needs as a two-year-old in Haida Gwaii. Mm -hmm. The cultural differences may be different, the regional differences, but I think that it's really time for a national overview, recognizing that the provinces have done and will continue to do things somewhat differently. Well, there's been lots of public reaction. Here's a Tons. tweet from a reader. After $150 a day for irregular childcare over 10 years and $0 mat leave as a consultant, this conversation is overdue. How familiar is that story? I can't tell you how familiar. And I just want to make the point that the zero mat leave, I assume as a self-employed person, is part of the discussion. So I completely, that's common. I completely agree. But it's not the only public reaction. Here's one yep. that gets to the fairness issue. How is it that after I have raised my children at significant expense paying for daycare and a two working parent family that yep. I must now pay to subsidize the daycare of other parents? What do you make of that? Well, that also doesn't surprise me because that's a kind of generational, you know, kind of fairness kind of thing. And you hear this, I mean, I'm an older person. You hear this from older people a lot. Um, I guess what I would say is that Unfortunately, that is the way it is. Before Medicare, like there were Canadians who didn't have medical care, but then when we had Medicare, everybody's basic costs were covered through tax dollars. It's the same thing when you start any kind of a social program. But from policy to politics to implementation is a long road. Absolutely. What is your fear about the debate around affordable daycare in this election? My greatest fear is that it will dissolve only into politics. You see, I think that the policy is really important and that the policy should inform the politics. So far, I can see that happening because there's a policy discussion that's in the political realm. I'd like to see that continue and have clearly demarcated positions, actually, which we already have to some extent. What do you say to people who say, we can't afford it? And I would say that a lot of it has to do with priorities, I mean, and how you spend your money. And I guess the other thing that I'd like to say is that um, you may f find this in co the comments that you get on international programs. Canada's, Canada is a wealthy country. Other countries that are less wealthy than Canada have much, much better provision of early childhood education and childcare. We're at the bottom, and um, countries that have lower GDPs than we do are much higher than we are. I mean, when it comes to looking at indicators of quality and access and things like that. So I don't, I don't, I think that that's, that's a, a, a straw, a straw person, a straw man. We can't afford it. I don't, I, I don't, I question that. Okay. Thanks, Martha. Thank you for having me. Well, we want to hear from you. Where do you stand on the issue of a national level affordable daycare program? Tweet us at Globe Now. Staying with daycare, Canadians advocating for affordable daycare say there are countries that Canada could learn from. So, what has been the experience of other countries and what are the lessons? The Globe's Aaron Anderson takes a look. When it comes to childcare, Canada is way behind many other European nations. Here are six things we can learn from the countries that do it better. First, it's not daycare, it's education. 
Not three-year-olds sitting at desks, but a strong curriculum based on play. In New Zealand, that's also meant teaching about diversity and citizenship. Number two, highly trained, well-paid caregivers. A good system depends on it. Three, cities run the show. Most European systems are administered by municipalities who can manage demand, plan for future needs, and place childcare centers in the best locations, such as schools. Four, Canadian parents pay some of the highest childcare fees in the world, and they just keep rising. European systems set reasonable caps and base fees on sliding income scales. In Slovenia, parents get deals on their second and third children. Number five, follow the money. Good systems set targets, keep lots of data, and track how well they're doing. Australia is just one place that's created a grading system for childcare centers, making it public to parents. And number six, think long term. Sweden may be the gold standard now for early childhood education, but they've been building that system for nearly 40 years. Catching up to them will take time, and putting childcare back on the national agenda is just the beginning. That's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. How much do you think the experiences of other countries should apply to the Canadian situation? Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Chaudhry. Thanks for watching.